Welcome to the 16th video in this series of videos on programming chess engine in C. So in this video we're going to quickly wrap up the pass FEN function here and pass in the side casting permission and on passant square. We're not going to, I'm going to ignore the 50 move rule for now. So these P three parts into the position, set the hash key, and then we're good to go. It's not going to take very long. I'm going to do this again with a little bit of copy and paste so it speeds the videos up. Um, but the first thing we need to do is, if you'd followed how the previous section works setting up the pieces, our FEN pointer should be pointing at the W or B. And we're going to make the assumption here, well, let's put an assert in actually. And we'll say that our FEN should be pointing to a W or our FEN should be pointing to a B. Otherwise, if it's not, we've got some rather serious problems. So what we're going to do then for this first part here is we're going to set the side. I'm going to use a, to save a little bit of space here, the conditional operator here. So I'm basically, it's like an if, but on one line, an if else on one line. But I'm saying our side is equal to if we're pointing to a W, it's white. Otherwise, it's black, because if it's not a W, it must be a B. And then I'm moving our pointer another few, uh, two characters along in the FEN string, which means it's gone one, two, so it's now moved on to this K. So now the castling permission. You remember with the castling permission that we set our castling permissions each as a bit. So white as what, king as one, white queen as two, black king as four, black queen as eight. So that means we're going to be using the bitwise or operator to set our castling permission up, which will be anywhere from 0 to 15. And the way we do that is quite simple. We need a loop that goes from 0 to 4 because we can have anything, any number of kq, kq, small and uppercase here, or a dash if there's no castling permission at all. So we need a loop of up to four steps. And I'll just copy and paste in all the code to do this here. So we've got a loop here of, and I'll just take this out for now, we've got a loop here of not up to four, so not to including three. We're saying if we're pointing to a space then break out of this loop and at the moment otherwise go on to the next character. So at the moment this will loop through the dash or any other characters that are there and then break out of the loop and then go on to the next piece of text which will be the on passant square. In between there though I want to process whatever character it's looking at and here you can see quite simply depending on which character it is up or lower case I simply use a bitwise or then to put in the bit that's appropriate for the castling permission. Of course if we had a dash then we wouldn't do anything and when we would be moving with this increment here onto a space anyway. And say we only had a big K and a big Q, then we would loop round twice, and then we would here be pointing to a space, which means this section here would then break us out of the loop. We would then be pointing at that loop, break out of the loop at this space here, which is why we've got this increment down here to move on then to the on passant square. And the on passant square is, well, what we can do actually here very quickly, we can say that we'll assert that our castle permission is greater than or equal to naught, and our castle permission is less than or equal to 15. And now all we need is the on passant square. So if I go back to the code I've already typed, and this is also very simple. Here we're basically saying if we're not pointing at a dash, it means that we have an on passant square. And the assumption will be that the following two characters are a letter and then a number. And the letter should be A to H and the number 1 to 8. Otherwise we've got some serious problems. And I'm simply setting the integer for file and rank here using this trick of using the ASCII character values rather than the actual characters themselves to get the integer out, much like was done here. And I just get the file and rank simply from a 0 to 7 basis on that. A quick assert here to check that they're actually on the board. There could be a more refined assert here which checks that if white's to move then it's on the 6th rank and if black's to move it's on the 3rd rank, but it doesn't really matter. 
and then I use our file rank to square macro to set the on percent square. And the last thing I need to do when I've done that is generate our hash key. And the, the function's done, we're good to go. I just return zero because we haven't had an error, and that's the end of our parsifen function. So at last, in the next video, we're able to we'll be able to write a quick print board function to actually print the board to the screen and we'll send in a couple of the position setup screens to see what we get and that everything's working okay in this function. And then we've got a couple of more irritating things to do before we get on to actually move generation. We need to write a function to fill up this piece list because we haven't done it yet and that'll end up going at the end of this function, the parsefen function. And we also need to write a function to check the board and generate some of the material values on the board. So you'll remember that we have counts for major pieces, minor pieces. We've got the pawns here being set up, the number of pieces. I'm also going to add in something that adds up the material value of the pieces. This will also need to come in. And once we've done all that, we can finally start looking at how we generate moves on the board and then we can move into actually something called perf testing, which is a tester of a move generator. Good, so hope uh, that all that's clear so far, and thanks very much for watching, taking time to listen, comments, questions, questions, welcome as always on YouTube.